Today I'm going to be racing XMOBAR on camera. Now, I know what you're thinking. Matt, didn't you make a video about 20 days ago, exactly 20 days ago, that had a banner that looked like this? Yes. Yes, I did. I did do that. I did say I was breaking up with XMONAD. But, <laughs> I'm an incredibly stubborn person. I don't like to give up, even though XMONAD made me feel dumb more than usual, but I wanted to drive back in. I wanted to try it again to give it one last chance, and I'm having some success. I've been using it now for a whole day. Uh, I like it, but Haskell's still stupid. <laughs> uh, but I'm at least understanding it a little bit more. So what I thought I'd do today is go through and rice XMOBAR. Now, the way I got XMONAD to work finally and to work well with all the features that I wanted to was actually just downloading DistroTube's configuration files and using them as my own. Now, I have gone through and customized things a little bit, but I've left most of the ricing the same because I wanted to do that on a video. I have gone through and changed some of the key bindings and added a few scratch pads because I love scratch pads. You can never have enough of them. So I have done some tweaking. But for the most part, the rice is the same. So let's go ahead and jump in. Today we're going to be ricing XMOBAR. But before I do, two things. One, this is not a tutorial. I'm still very much a noob at XMONED and XMOBAR. So if you learn something from this, fantastic. If you don't, well, I mean, uh, I mean, whatever. Uh, second of all, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to reach 3,000 subscribers here fairly soon. So every like, comment, and subscription actually really helps the channel. So thanks to everybody who's already done so. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so this is what my XMO bar or an XMO ad look like right now. And as you can see, this is mostly just DT's config. I've done very little in terms of customizing the look and feel of it. I've changed uh, the workspace names which is you know not that big of a, an accomplishment seeing so how I, it was just a matter of uncommenting something. And I've gone through and added a few scripts to XMOBAR, and those are the ones that are in white here. So I've gone through and done all that stuff. Because really, I didn't care about the colors so much. I just wanted to make sure I could at least understand how to get those modules up in the bar. And I figured that out, so uh, I, I feel very accomplished. I've also gone through and changed the font size and the bar size and all that stuff. Um, but other than that, I've done nothing in terms of rising. But that's, like I said, that's because I want to do that in video. So let's go ahead uh, and see what I want to do. So first of all, uh, let's look at the color scheme that I've chosen. If this looks familiar to you, that's because it's the exact same color scheme that I used for my DWM rice. And I've chosen this one because I really, really do like it. So... It was just easy to go with this one, something that I know, something that I can fairly easy get done without it looking weird. I tried to come up with my own rising color scheme for i3. If you watched that stream, you'll know that it was mostly a complete failure. Purple and pink and black only go together so far before it just becomes entirely too much. I will link that in the show notes or the video description. But that was a disaster. So I just decided to use one that was, you know, pre-made. So let's go ahead and uh, start this off. So the way XMOBAR works, from what I can tell, is that we have a background color and a foreground color. And that's mostly to do with things that aren't in the template down here at the bottom. And then you have position and a few flags of how it behave. So whether or not it's lowered on start, high on start, alt on all desktops, if it's persistent, and so on and so forth. And then we have a, I guess a string here. I don't know if that's what you'd call it. You have a group of stuff here that are all of your commands for your modules up here. So you have the date and time, the network, and so on and so forth. These are things that you add. Uh, most of these things are ones that came with uh, DT's config. So like the, the, the date and the network and the CPU and the memory and the disk uh, were all exactly the same 
and all been left almost exactly the same from how DT had it. The only thing I've changed is I made the clock a little bit different and made it 12 hour the 12 hour clock instead of the 20, 12, 24 hour clock. It's just easier this way for me. Uh, no math involved. Math is hard. Whatever. <laughs> but anyways, I actually could go through and delete the the network one because I don't need it. And I don't use it. So I can just delete that. The ones that I've added, I ch I've changed the pack update script to where it's located for me. So other than that, that's the same as his. But I, I added volume, uh, MPD, uh, the temperature one, uptime, and the mail script here. And these are all the same scripts that I use for my DWM bar as well. And then the, once you get past that section, you have a few variables that are called. And uh, these are used when you're calling the names of your commands and such. And then you have the template. This is by far the most annoying part of XMO bar for me, is that these this is all done on one line, and it's very hard to actually read. Now, for those of you who watched my keybinding script thing, thing, you'll know that I did all that in one line, and uh, that, <laughs> that was unreadable but this was this is way more unreadable because this goes for um like 900 lines of stuff and it's really just not all that readable at all so i don't know if there's any way you could stop that maybe it's just the way that i have vim set up because i think that if i had vim set up to wrap text it would probably go through and wrap that text uh, but i don't have them set up that way so Unfortunately, it's all just one line. Now, if we go back to the beginning here, we can go through and change some of the colors, which is what we're going to do. So we want the background to be, uh, let's see here. So ch change this word here. So 0F111A, okay? And then the foreground color, I believe we want to be E five E nine F zero. Okay. And that will go through and change the background color. And then we go here. We want to get rid of all of the lines in between these. You can't really see them anyways, uh, unless you like zoom in or whatever. Uh, but there's a, a pipe in between each one of these. I want to, I'm just going to delete those. Uh, now I know there's a way I could go through and do that with a, a substitution, but I'm just going to go through and do it manually um, just because it's easier. And that way I don't accidentally substitute or something, you know, that I wasn't supposed to. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do now is just go through and delete all those first. That way I don't forget. We'll leave spaces in between these. The cool thing about XMO bar is that you can assign each of these uh, parts up here an action, a click action. So if you go through and click on them, it will actually bring up the thing that you've assigned to. And that's really nice. That's something that you can't do with uh, DWM bar unless you use DWM blocks. And I use SL status, which you know doesn't work that way, unfortunately. For whatever reason, I decided to use SL status in DWM. I couldn't get uh, colors to work in DWM blocks. I've gotten all that done. Now I'm going to go through and restart XMonad so we can see what we've done so far. Okay, so we've gotten some change here, and I think that background looks way better. So the next thing we're going to go through and do and is actually change the way these colors are done. And this is going to be quite the process, because what I've decided to do is instead of have the whole text and icon that color, I'm just going to make the icon that color, uh, similar to how I've done in my DWM race. So that's going to take some doing. So 
the way colors are done in Exmo Bar, it's done with this FC, like, uh, I, I guess you'd call it an element. This is kind of, it, it looks very similar to what you'd see in, like, CSS and HTML, kind of, because you have the open and close tags and all that kind of stuff. It's really weird, because this is, this is Haskell, or I, it's supposed to be Haskell. It's not actually Haskell. It's something, some weird something or the other. I'm not actually sure what this language actually is. I don't think it's actually anything. Because normally when it says this is actually Haskell, you'd see Haskell down here at the bottom. And you don't see that in Vim. So I don't know what language it says. It's not HTML or anything like that. So it's really weird. <laughs> but it, it reminds you a lot of HTML because of the open close tags. So the way colors work is just you set this FC equals and then the color you want. So for me, the way I'm going to be doing this is the FC here is going to be my color. So in this case, I'm going to change this word here to BF616A. Okay. And then after this FN, which is something that you have to wrap that icon in the FN if you want to show up. So I'm going to create a close tag for FC here and an open tag for FC here equals pound E5 E and that one there. Yep. And then close that tag there and uh, let's see. Yeah, that should work. Okay. So Hopefully what that will do is that will change the color of the music icon, but leave the name of the song and band white. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if that worked. It did not work. It made it... Uh, that's because there's way too many numbers here. This is... A, this is... This is wrong here. Okay, so it's E... 5e 9f0. Okay, now try again. Yeah, there we go. Good. And I think what I'm going to do is here where there's the, um, I think if I put a space in between here, I can actually go through and have a space. Um, because I want a space. Actually, this better be a better to put a space between the, the next icon, right? Yeah. Okay. I think that's the way it would work. Be better. So the the same thing for the email one. So we want to put in a. a you want to change this color code here to green. So A. Three. B E eight C. Okay, and then put a close tag, so slash FC. Okay, and then we want to do an open tag, so FC equals pound uh, E5E. E. I'll have these memorized hopefully by the end. Um, 9F0. Okay, and then we'll close that there. Oops, great. Then we want to add a space before this. Okay, so we'll write that and then restart okay and that's good yep okay and then we want also want to put a space between the next icon as well so and i don't think i need as much of a space after this uh envelope here we'll see if that works better yeah it looks better good okay so moving on so that takes care of mail next one is uptime So, again, we want to change this color code here, and this is going to be yellow, so E, B, C, B, 8, B. Okay, and then add a color code here, or end code here, F, C, and then an open code here, or op open tag, I should say, F, C equals pound E, 5, E. 9F0. Okay. And then we'll make sure there's a close tag there. Yep. And then we'll restart, make sure it worked. 
Oh, we need to add a space again back here. Okay, good. All right, moving on. The next one is temperature. Oh, we looks like we forgot one of those pipes. Missed one of the pipes. Okay, so change this one here, and this one's going to be blue. So change that color code to B1A1C1. Okay. And put a close tag here. Okay, and an open tag here equals E5E. 9F0, and that's then we're actually going to do two here this time, and we'll change. Um, all right, so this one here is going to be a little bit different because this is where we get to the part where these are actually already colored. So, and it's also going to be a little bit different because the these icons are actually up there, up in the cup the commands. So that's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to have to go through and change that. So in order to put an icon here, what we'll, what we'll do is go through and put the icons here so that's all consistent. And I have the cheat sheet here. So we can go through and first change the color to what we want to change. And this is going to be purple, so it's going to be A4, 8, E, A, D. Okay. And then the, the code for the icons is FN equals 2. I, to tell you the truth, I don't know what that equals 2 means. I know you can set it to something different. Uh, because the one at the end has equals three. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe it means spaces. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. And we'll put a coat end one here as well. Fn. Okay. And then this is where we'll put the icon, which we want the icon for CPU to be a chip. I think. Yeah, this one this should work here. So we'll copy that and paste that. Yep, that will work. Okay, and then we'll put a close tag here for the color and an open one equals E5E 9F0. Okay, and that should take care of the CPU one. Yep. Okay, good. And then we'll do the same thing here for memory. Now, so that means we'll need to change the color here first. And this one is going to be, I guess we're going to go back to red. So BF616A. Okay. And then FN equals 2 space space so we can have space in there slash fn and then we want the uh, icon to be like a chart or something one of these charts should be good this one will be good and then paste that that'll be good and we'll leave a space because we may not need that extra space but we'll leave it there and then we will put a close tag here for the colors and open tag equals E5E, almost have it memorized, 9F0. And then we'll close that. And then that takes care of memory. The next one is the disk. So we will change this color. This one here is going to be green. A3BE8C and then F, FN, oops, FN equals 2 and then we'll close that FN and then we want this one to be 
Uh, let's see. I think there's a hard drive. Oops, actually going to have to spell right. Nope, there's not a disk. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, it's right here. HDD. Everything else on here is not an abbreviation, but this one here happens to be an abbreviation. That is completely inconsistent. Okay. And we'll paste that. And that looks right. And then we'll put a close tag here. And an open tag equals... E five E. I can't get those last three numbers. Nine F zero. Nine F zero. Okay, that takes care of CPU. the The volume one is going to be a little bit easier because I already have that one done. So we change that one to. We'll make that blue. Eight eight C zero D zero. And then here we'll put a close tag and an open tag for colors equals E5E9F0. It doesn't have to be capitalized, so that should be okay. We make, gotta make sure to close that. Um, and that takes care of volume. Uh, and the next one is going to be the updates, which should also be fairly easy. This one can be purple, which is A48 EAD. And then we will put a, I think there needs to be like a space before this. Yeah. So we'll put a close tag here. Oops, that's not a close tag. We forgot the slash. And then we'll put an open tag equals pound e5 e0 or 9f0 9f0 close okay and that takes care of volume and one more and we're almost done is the date so the, the date one is going to be a little bit different because again the the icon is in the wrong place we'll have to go through and delete that part here in a minute so the color for this one is going to be uh, red, sure, B, B, F, 616, A. I may end up changing these later. And then we need F, N equals 2, F, N, and then we'll close out the F, C here and open up an F, C equals pound E, 5, E, 9, F, 0. I told you I'd remember it by the end. <laughs> Okay, I did that one completely without looking. So now we need to just get the icon, which will be here. Um, let's see, we need clock. There we go. This will work. All right, there we go. Now we need to go through up here and sh delete the icons from these. So we just delete between the FNs. Just delete this part. I think the space needs to stay there, but maybe not. We'll delete one space. We'll know we're wrong if XMO bar disappears. Just delete these. And delete this here. Okay, we're gonna write. We're gonna restart XMO and XMO bar. Now this should be a, a radical change. And it is. Of course, those colors aren't showing up. So we made the same mistake when we did the first one. What was that mistake? It, it must be the colors aren't right. So the first one is temperature. So we'll go down here to the temperature and see if the, the code's not right. Because the codes for th four of them are just aren't showing up. So we're going to scroll down here to the temperature for the first temperature one. This one here is here. E5E9F0. FC. 
That should be right. E5E9F0. Make sure I got the right code. E5E9F0. Yeah. Why is it not working? What's the difference between... This one... What's the difference between this one here... E5E. I've obviously made a, a, a mistake in the syntax somewhere. FC equals pound sign. Ah, uh, there's no pound sign. You gotta put a pound sign there. That's gonna be the mistake I'm, I made on every single one of them. I guarantee it. So we're just gonna go down here. Look, no pound sign. <laughs> uh, you just got when you don't do things right, things don't go right. Uh, let's see here. Make sure we didn't forget one. This one here. So that should be. That was the. And there should be another one, the hard drive one. You're probably watching me make those mistakes. You're, you're probably shouting at the screen, "You idiot!" Put a pound sign there. Okay, so now we can try again. There we go. Yeah, that's good. So now there's an, too much space between the the memory one and the hard drive one. So we need to delete some spaces there. So the hard drive one, you need to delete a space. And we'll delete a space between the memory one as well. And we'll delete a space between the CPU one as well. Actually, it looks like the memory one, or the the one with the chipset, uh, which is CPU, I believe, needs to have two deleted. Maybe even the one before, but we'll try just one. So we'll see what this looks like. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. The space for the memory one is still a little off. Alright. Um, so the, me the memory one needs to... Trying to find out why there's this extra space here for the memory one. Um, maybe because there's a space there. Uh, maybe there's an extra space because the number gets bigger. I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter, but it does look better. There's also an extra space there between the clock one. So we'll go down here to the end and we'll delete that extra space. I'm trying to get the spaces to look at least somewhat similar. Yeah, that's better. Okay, good. Uh... Looks like there should be a space between the temperature and the uptime. I really wish this wasn't all in one line. That's easily the worst part about this, is that it's all in one line. You have to scroll and scroll and scroll. And then by the time you're done scrolling, you've forgotten what you're doing. I think what I was doing was putting a space between here. Yeah, it looks better. Uh, a space in between the hard drive and the volume as well. Okay. Then after that, the next thing will be to work on the workspace name colors. Yeah, it looks better. Good. Awesome. Okay. So, what's different here is that the workspace name colors and stuff is actually done from your Xmonad config. So, we're done here. So I can go through and actually close this out here. We'll make sure we saved it again, which is good. We'll close that. Now, if we go down here to the bottom, uh, now this is xmonad.hs, as you can see here. And as far as I'm aware, this is where the colors for the workspaces are done. So this right here is the current workspace, the xmonbar color. So if we change this color here to... green 
I think, is the one that we want. This is basically green already, but we want it the cor correct green. This should be A three B E eight C. A three B E eight C. Make sure it's all right. Okay, and then this one here is the visible but not current workspace. So this is going to be on the other monitor, and I want this to be red. So this is going to be BF six one six A. Okay, and then this one here is going to be inactive workspaces, and we want that to be, I think I'm just going to make these white. So we'll change this word here to E5E, F9F0, E5E, F9F0, <laughs> okay, and then we will save that, and then restart Xmonad. And there we go. Cool. Now, the purple ones are this color here, and we want those just to be white as well, I think. I think I want those to be white. We'll, we'll make them white, and we'll see if it, if I change my mind. E, 5, E. There we go. All right. And write this. There we go. Yeah, that's cool. That's really good. Um, and then I think that's good enough. Uh, this is the color of the title active window, so we can change this to white as well. Yep. And I think that's good enough. Uh, the workspace here can change to red. The urgent workspace, I mean, BF. 616A. Okay, and that's good. That's good. We'll write this and we'll restart Xmonad to see make sure it looks good. Yeah. That looks good. Um it's not quite as colorful as the DWM one because I don't have that extra like color here in the middle. I could probably change that, but I actually kind of like this. Um so That is Rising Exmo Bar. It was done in like 40 minutes. <laughs> and I didn't make too many mistakes other than, you know, actually not going through and, you know, adding the pound sign where it's supposed to be. So, and that's just a, a, a typo. So, uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this content, I will probably be making some more videos on Exmo Bar and Xmonad and stuff. Uh, I, I seem to be obsessed with this window manager for, for right now. I did install Herb Sluff. WM the other day. I haven't dived much into it, uh, but there will be a video on Her Herbst Luff here in a week or so once I get my head around it and get a bar working and stuff. So uh, thanks for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Facebook at the LinuxCast, and you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons, Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.